So in this video, I want to talk about the difference between MAGA Republicans and Reagan Republicans. The Republican Party is pretty divided right now, and everybody's aware of that, but Ronald Reagan would be spinning in his grave if he understood that Republicans are <laughs> siding with Russia. What? What's, what's going on? But it's not all Republicans. It's MAGA Republicans that are kind of okay with just letting Russia do what they're doing, as Donald Trump talked about the other day. So I want to make the distinction because it's really important that you understand who your friends are and who your enemies are as far as that goes if you stand with Ukraine. Okay, so this post from Randy Mott, I see that it's difficult to be a Republican and pro-Ukraine on Twitter, at least if you want to keep followers. Struggle's real, my friend. I have the same problem with my YouTube channel. To be to pro-Ukraine folks who do not care for Republicans, that's those of you on the left side of the spectrum who like, well, you're the Republicans are doing this. Don't paint with such a broad brush stroke, okay? It's not the Republicans, it's a wing within the Republican Party. To pro-Ukraine folks who do not care for Republicans, if Trump wins, don't you think it would be a good idea to have built-in pro-Ukraine faction in the party that might have some influence to keep the U.S. policy on track? Good question. Is he potentially going to win? He has a pretty good shot at being able to win. Like, let's, let's be honest. I'm not rooting for him, but it's possible. It also might be relevant that the only American political group that is pushing for a goal of Ukraine victory, not just that we're going to denigrate Russia, but utter victory for Ukraine and changing the drip, drip, drip aid that is the same wing of my party. All of our committee heads in Congress, for example, are Reagan Republicans who are pushing for this. Now, they can't get past Mike Johnson, who is pretty MAGA related, but the pro-Ukrainian Reagan Republicans are a whole different breed. Now, there's a difference between Republicans and Democrats, and I know a number of you will say, well, why can't you just vote Biden? Because of every other reason, okay? So on Ukraine, I am kind of on the same side with Biden in that sense. But I really would prefer a more hawkish approach to Ukraine than even Biden provides, but we just don't have that opportunity. But look at all the areas where Republicans and Democrats are on different pages. Inflation. Republicans are over here. Democrats are over here. This is showing how important it is to you. 77% of Republicans say inflation's a big deal. Only 52% of Democrats, I, I, just, I can't understand how, think that inflation's a problem. But it flips almost exactly on affordability of health care. At least on the ability of Dems and Republicans to be able to work together, we all agree that nobody can work together. But look at issues like gun violence, very important, 81% to Democrats and 38% to Republicans. But look at the budget deficit or illegal immigration very important to Republicans and very not important to Democrats. So we're very divided in many ways. So you can't just go, well, you just become a Democrat. No, all my other values impede that. Now let's look at something else. I'm going to show you how to determine whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or um, which kind of Republican or which kind of Democrat you are very simply. This was an, an academic article, Presidential Rhetoric and Populism, and it started off talking about how scholars and the general public have been struck by the norm-shattering rhetoric of President Donald Trump. His rhetorical signature is heavy with Manichaean good versus evil images, vilification of his opponents, and disdain for institutions and evidence. Now, down, down the line here, they get to this. So, part of the difference in the Republican Party between conservatives on one side and uh, populists on the other is... Do they, what do they say about elites? If you hear them talk about the elites or the uniparty or that kind of thing, it's all these bad guys up here somewhere, then you know they're not conservatives, they're populists. Are you anti-elitist? If the answer is no, then you're a conservative, a Reagan conservative type. If the answer is yes, then you ask, ask a different question. Manichaean, is it all good versus evil? Is it like, you know, this, this visionary of this is good, that's evil? If the answer is no, you're probably in the progressive camp with Clinton and Obama. You're probably over on that side of the spectrum. If the answer is yes, then you're over in the populist camp. But which kind of populist are you? So if your answer with the populist is it's the economic elites, it's the, the big businessmen and that kind of thing, you're in a traditional left-wing populist like FDR and Bernie Sanders. Now, if your answer is it's the political elites, 
right? It's the swamp. It's the uniparty. It's that kind of thing. Or, or ethnic outgroups, th those are the problems. Then you're in right-wing populists with Trump. So you could probably pigeon your hole yourself just by looking at this simple chart to understand which it is. But there's a big difference between Reagan conservatives over on this side and right-wing populists, which are different types of people, on the other. It's kind of like the Tea Party was far more over here and the... Uh, the MAGA, which looks like the Tea Party, but isn't. They're, they're too, they, they overlap a little bit, but not a whole lot. Uh, they're over here with, they're there for very different reasons than where the Tea Party was to start with. Okay, now what's going to happen in the election? Well, if you look at the election, and now when I'm, I'm talking about this on St. Patrick's Day, March 17th of 2024, Trump with independence, beats Biden pretty significantly. Trump 45 to Biden 33, Trump's up by 12. And if you look at like a, a poll with Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama, he would beat all of them with independence today. This is Rasmussen reports. They're very reliable. It's not like some right-leaning kind of tabloid. That So there's a problem. Now, let's keep going. Dick Cheney came out and was talking about Trump being in our nation's 246 year history. There has never been an individual who is a greater threat to our republic than Donald Trump. Dick Cheney doesn't like him. Dick Cheney was George Bush's vice president. What about his vice president? This is Mike Pence. This is what Pence had to say. Donald Trump is pursuing and articulating an agenda that is at odds with the conservative agenda that, that we governed on during our four years. And that's why I cannot in good conscience uh, endorse Donald Trump in this campaign. But let me say one last thing. So what he's saying is that what Trump is advocating is not conservative. Like he was just talking about how we're not we're going to put a hundred percent tax on all imports. That's protectionism. That's not conservatism. Conservatives react to that. Libertarian conservatives, particularly, like what? What are you talking about? There's a big difference between this type of conservative or this type of Republican and that type of Republican conservative, as opposed to populist Trump MAGA. Okay, let's keep going. Now, if the election was held today, who's leading in the polls. This was a uh, Reuters yesterday, uh, and it looks like Joe Biden has a marginal 1% point lead over Donald Trump ahead of the presidential election, according to Reuters. Of course, The Economist has it as a dead heat. Look at this. This is this is The Economist, 45-45. It's, it's a real horse race, and the the change, like I showed you earlier, was the, so on the left, they're probably not going to go that, that far. On the right, they're probably not going to go that far. It's independents who will make the final decision. Now, before you say all Republicans are bad or they just need to go vote for Biden, look, for multiple reasons that I showed you earlier, they can't necessarily vote for Biden. Maybe they could stay home. Maybe they could influence Trump. I don't know what it is, but you, it's not that simple to say that. But here's how Reagan Republicans are thinking through these kinds of things. This is Vote Vets TV spot. You all knew that some things are worth dying for. One's country is worth dying for, and democracy is worth dying for, because it's the most deeply honorable form of government ever devised by man. All of you loved liberty. All of you were willing to fight tyranny. And you knew the people of your countries were behind you. These are the things that shaped the unity of the Allies. We in America have learned bitter lessons from two world wars. It is better to be here ready to protect the peace than to take blind shelter across the sea, rushing to respond only after freedom is lost. We've learned that isolationism never was and never will be an acceptable response to tyrannical governments with an expansionist intent. The strength of America's allies is vital to the United States and the American security guarantee is essential to the continued freedom of Europe's democracies. We were with you then, we're with you now. Okay, and this is a spot that will be played in Washington over the next few weeks, particularly to put pressure on um, senators and congressmen, well, I guess more in the House than in the Senate, on congressmen to be able to hopefully get one of these bills through to get something on the table or to get uh, either of the petitions going forward or something. Okay, so that's, we're, we're really, Reagan conservatives are on Ukraine's side trying to get things accomplished. 
Don't confuse them with MAGA. And I appreciate those of you, um, there are some of you, and I've seen some of the rhetoric change over time. So um, some would just say, well, Republicans are saying this, and Republicans are doing that. Don't paint with that big broad of a brush. Jay and Keeve, the world continues moving forward to defend civilization while the U.S. Congress remains captured by deranged MAGA fools. Now, I don't want to call names either with deranged and fools and whatever, but he's pointing out that it's MAGA lost in a sea of Russian disinformation. And there's a difference between saying all Republicans and MAGA. There's a big difference. Last little bit that I want to show you is this. This is John McCain. This is 10 years ago. 10 years ago, as this was first happening to Ukraine, McCain rails on GOP on Ukraine bill. Don't call yourself Reagan Republicans. Right Listen now, to this. as we speak, Vladimir Putin is either planning on or contemplating an invasion of eastern Ukraine. Incredibly, there will be an objection from this side to this legislation when the people of Ukraine are crying out for our help and our assistance. Now My remember, at the time, Barack Obama was president. Senator Brasso will now be proposing the House Amendment that has not one single sanction in it. What has happened? Where are our priorities? Is the IMF, no matter whether it's fixed or not fixed with this legislation, more important than the lives of thousands of people? Is that what we're talking about here? You know, I, I will say to my friends who were objecting to this, and there are a number of them on my side, you can call yourself Republicans. That's fine, because that's your voter registration. Don't call yourself Re Reagan Republicans. Ronald Reagan would never, would never go... That let this this kind of aggression go unresponded to by right. the American people. And I, I've been embarrassed. Okay. So that's where he is. That's where he was 10 years ago. That's where I stand today. Don't chase away those who also support Ukraine because they're Republicans if they support Ukraine. This, <laughs> there's a difference between MAGA and Reagan Republicans. Okay. Tell me what you thought about this. Put that in the comments below. Thank you for your time, the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.